I feel like your very first sparring session is what tells you if this sport is for you or if it's not for you. Is the first time you get hit, you will immediately know, oh, I don't really want to do it, or, oh my God, I love it, hit me again. So um, I kept going back because I really loved, as I was saying, learning about uh, the sport, getting better within the sport. Um, the, my very first experience of boxing wasn't that I walked into like a standard boxing gym. I was a, like an overweight teenager and I really wanted to get fit, get healthy, gain a bit of self-confidence. And um, I walked into a fitness centre and then I ha happened to have stumbled across a boxer size class, you know, one of those 20 punches, 20 burpees. And it honestly, it made me feel alive. But just having that one time a week wasn't enough for me. So, you know, I researched local gyms in my area and I happened to have walked into one which was a few roads down from where I lived. Um, back then, as I'm sure you know, it wasn't a lot of female participation. So I was the only girl um, attending week in, week out, which was quite hard, um, you know, but I, the love of the sport was the only reason that kept me going. Um, I was bullied uh, quite a bit when I was in high school for being overweight, uh, just because I stood out. And that's essentially what bullying is about. You pick on someone because they don't fit the mold and they, they don't look like you or they, you know, they don't act like you, they don't like what you like. But you have to remember that everyone is different and we're all individuals and the world would be so boring if everyone was the same. I just feel like, you know, bullying is not okay because you never know what someone is going through. Um, and I feel like we should all take the time to be kind to one another because only when we're kind to each other is when, you know, the world is a happy place. You know, the world is miserable enough as it is. Why add to someone else's misery? So, um, yeah, just be kind to one another, for sure. Being able to learn and grow week in, week out, year in, year out, um, is, is, is the beauty of boxing. And, um, yeah. Back then, uh, because there wasn't a lot of female participation and because, you know, the coaches back then really didn't give an interest in women, um, you know, the coaches you know, happy, were happy to take my money for at attending, but they didn't really teach, I feel like they really, they didn't really teach me much about boxing. It wasn't until like many years later that uh, that gym that I initially walked into, which for, for the record, I never had a single sparring session, closed down. I moved areas within London and then I walked into a kickboxing gym. <laughs> And that was when I had my very first sparring session uh, with another woman who completely kicked my ass, by the way. It was really embarrassing. And she did so for many weeks after that. But, but what I took from that experience was that I wanted to get better because I wanted to be in a position where one day I was going to kick her ass and give her a lesson. And that was what kept going through my mind was just me getting better, me being able to be in the ring with someone of her experience and me gaining her respect. And I think I eventually got it. Um, and it was the best feeling in the world that day that that happened. And how did your family uh, feel about you going into boxing? Were they supportive? Yeah, my family weren't very supportive. You know, they wanted to me to be either like a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer or something. But, you know, telling them that you want to get into a sport is like, hmm, well, you failed. So um, I kept my um, love for boxing a secret from them for many, many, many years. Um, and, you know, it all became exposed when uh, my brother saw me one day on TV, told my family there was this whole intervention and my parents asked me to stop. Um, and so I did for a really long time, but the love of boxing, you know, just kept calling me and I eventually went back to the gym in secret again. <laughs> I'm such a rebel. Um, and um, yeah, they, you know, they're, they're now like my biggest supporters. Um, they come to watch me fight. 
you know, they wear Ramla Ali t-shirts, they ask me how training's going, they ask me, you know, who are you fighting next? Can we come watch? And it's quite nice um, to have that kind of support because it just, you know, I wish I had that support all those many years ago in boxing and it's, I've only now realised how important that support is. It allows you to, um, you know, go further in the sport, I think, for sure. It's not a sport you can definitely do alone. It's a sport that you need a community, love, family all around you. And there's one day I told my mum I was going for a run, um, packed my bags, uh, left it outside. Mum, I'm going for a run, I'll see you in a bit. Um, I, went, I went to compete in the nationals, <laughs> which was happening. It was in the famous York Hall in uh, London which I was just fortunate enough to live like two roads down from. Um, I went, competed in the nationals, won the nationals. I didn't even have time to celebrate with my friends. I had to go back home, you know, threw the bag outside, walked back in because I was still sweaty. And my mom was like, how was the run? Oh yeah, it was really good. <laughs> went upstairs, took a shower and just sat in my bed, just the happiest person in the world. But it was really sad because uh, no one from my family was there to watch me in like one of my most proudest moments. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was a good day. So okay, so so growing up, did you watch boxing or you just trained? Did you know the fights that were going on? Did you look up to any fighters? As a professional, it, you know, my my. Um, my brother and my dad, you know, they, they loved like the, the big fights, like I said, Mike Tyson and things like that. But for me, the female professional that I looked up to was Lucia Riker. She was just a badass, like, and she was just so humble and pretty as well. Like to, to you know, there was all these like negative connotations around female boxers that, you know, they're butch and they're manly. And then you see someone like Lucia Riker who was stunning, but just like a beast in the ring. Who wouldn't like look up to someone like that? So yeah, she was, um, yeah, one of my boxing heroes growing up for sure. You're already on the mainstream. You're yeah. a superstar, you're an international <laughs> model. And you're going into, you know, boxing, which is a small, you've seen, it's a yeah. small community. We all yeah. know each other. Um, what, what made you want to do that or what came first? So bo boxing, boxing always, like for me, in, in, in you know, my timeline, boxing was first. As a boxer, you need to be able to transcend the sport. Like you can't just be a, a boxer. I think it's just very boring, I find. You need to be able to, you know, relate to people outside of the sport and relate to the kids and relate to, relate to the audience that you want to come and watch you. And... Um, yeah, for me in my timeline, boxing was first and then, you know, I started competing for Somalia and there's no money in that. Competing for a third world country is like zero funding. So, you know, I was scouted one day uh, to, to model and I was like, oh, no, 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 because I was always a very shy person. I was an overweight teenager that was bullied severely in, in, in school to the point where I had depression and things like that. So the idea of going in front of the camera really, really scared me. Um, but then, you know, I saw the money that was being offered and I thought, wow, this could help a lot towards some of the tournaments that I want to do. There's so many times where I give up loads of like big paying jobs because I'm in camp and I want to focus I want to focus all my time and energy to being better and performing the best to the best of my ability on fight night and I can only do that if I you know put all the if I sacrifice everything and so many times I've had to sacrifice for the sport because I love the sport and for me boxing is always number 1 because I know you one of your biggest goals you're fighting for a title this next fight for mm -hmm. uh, IBF, but I know one of your biggest, you told me last year. And I've told Pepe today as well. One of my biggest goals is to get the WBC uh, belt. Uh, it's always been a dream of mine. It's just, yeah, yeah. To, to be a world champion, to be a WBC world champion. And that's not to say I don't want to be, I don't want to get the other belts, but for me, <laughs> I've always wanted um, 
the WBC belt. It's just the, the type of belt that sort of cements that you're a world champion. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. I never, in all honesty, I never had any intentions of turning professional. Um, but, you know, seeing um, the, the number of women transition from the amateurs to the professional and, and how hard it is now becoming to, to be a world champion, I just wanted to take my shot as well. Um, I know it's not going to be easy, uh, especially who currently holds the WBC, um, but it's, it's a challenge that I'm willing to take for sure because, you know, as they say is another quote, fortune favours the brave. Um, so yeah, one day I know in my heart I'm going to be a world, uh, I'm going to be a WBC world champion. Somalia has never won anything. <laughs> it's never had a female or a male or anyone uh, qualify and uh, go to the Olympics. So I did that for them as well. They've never had a gold medal uh, in the Continentals. So I won the African Championships for mm -hmm. Somalia. They've never had that. You know, all these young girls are looking up to you now. So you need to conduct yourself in a certain manner. You need to hold yourself in a certain manner. You have to remember who who's watching you on, on social media, who's watching you on your interviews and, you know, how you talk and how you speak. Like, you know, sometimes you might forget yourself, but you have to always remember who is watching you. There's a little girl out there and you're going to show them that you can do it, you can be and you can achieve anything that you want to be. Um, so yeah, it's really important, for sure. If you could change anything right now in boxing, what would it be? Men and women have the equal pay. I would love to change that. <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, but obviously it's ultimately down to the promoters. It's got nothing to do with anyone else. But yeah, that would be, that would be amazing. For sure. I think the one thing that has to happen is that a lot more people need to want and come to, need to want to come to watch more women fight. Mm -hmm. So women need to get behind other women. We need to, you know, be like, yo, so and so's fighting. Let's let's go. Let's let's go support. Let's make a night of it or something. So the more women that get behind other female fighters, you know, the more I feel like. The, the pay gap is going to uh, decrease, for sure. How, how did you end up with Coach Manny and, and in Southgate? In Southgate, oh. So uh, me, and, me and Richard were working together. And, um, you know, one thing that I love about him is that he has no ego. And he suggested bringing in another coach, which I didn't really want because I was, you know, too comfortable with him. And so we flew out to LA. We got in touch with Kevin from Matchroom and we said, uh, you know, we need help. Can you suggest a pro coach? And he said, M Manny is one of the best. You should definitely go see him. Spoke to him over the phone. We got such an amazing vibe from him. Walked into the gym the next day. I got an amazing vibe from him, an amazing session. And that was it. I was hooked. I was hooked to how he has taught me um, everything, everything. He's like really hard on everyone. So I like that I'm included in everyone. Like he's not just because, you know, I'm, I'm the newbie. Like he doesn't treat me different. He treats me the same as everyone else. If he's annoyed, he will tell me he's annoyed. And one thing that I'm learning is that I'm, you know, and, and so many people have noticed as well is how much I'm improving under his guidance. Um, which is great, like, I still feel like I've got so much more learning to do, but, you know, slowly, slowly we're getting there. And, and when, okay, so what, what are you, what kind of legacy do you want to leave? You know, I've always said that, yes, I want to win world titles, I want to win multiple world titles, be undisputed, the whole shebang. But the one thing I want to be remembered for is how I helped others outside of the ring. You know, I, came to the UK as a war refugee with basically nothing. Um, Hand-me-downs, I never had any, you know, new clothes or whatever. So, you know, if I'm in a position to help other people, other people that are struggling the same way that I was struggling, that, that gives me a bit of joy. Um, so yeah, that is probably the legacy that I want to leave behind is that, 
you know, she helped others to the best of her ability. And tell us about your foundation and why it's important to you. Um, Sisters Club is a foundation that I set up. So it wasn't initially a foundation. It was just this, you know, project of mine back in 2018 where I wanted to give women uh, a safe space, uh, women who came from religious minorities, ethnic minorities, you know, women who suffered from domestic violence, basically women that found it hard to gain access to sport. I wanted to give them a safe space where they could learn the art of boxing, where they could, you know, feel that they knew how to defend themselves. Uh, we have four different locations in London. We've opened our first location in LA um, and we're hoping to open another one in Texas soon. What is boxing outside of the ring and outside of the gym? I think boxing is discipline. Like you need to be disciplined, you know, to, to not have that pizza because you're going to put on five pounds because you've got something coming up. And even if you don't have something coming up, you know, you shouldn't have that pizza because it's, it's not going to make you feel good in training. So I feel like a lot of the times boxing is it's about discipline. You need to be disciplined enough to tell your friends, sorry, I can't go out because I've got running in the morning. Or sorry, I can't do this because, you know, I've got training in the morning. Um, yeah, like you said, boxing is a, is a, a you know, 24-7, 365 days of the year lifestyle for sure. And, you know, if, if I feel like... The people that don't have that level of discipline are not going to be the ones that succeed um, mm -hmm. uh, in the sport. Yeah. It, what has boxing given you? Um, <clears throat> boxing has given me so many opportunities. You know, I've met my husband because of boxing. Um, I, I feel like you, you know, your your biological family is the family that you know you have to deal with because, you know, you grew up with them, but you create a family within boxing and that's the family you essentially get to choose. And I think that's the one thing that I love um, about boxing. You said my career is quite short, but my professional career is quite short. My amateur career has been going on for ages and there's so many, so many amazing people and individuals that I met within my um, amateur career that I still can call family now. And there's so many amazing people that, you know, I have met uh, in my professional career, like uh, everyone at Knockout, I consider them all family. Man, he's like a second father to me now. You know, he takes, you know, he looks after me like I was one of his own, which is, that is what you need in a trainer. Um, so yeah, boxing has given me so many amazing things, but I think, the main thing is that it's given me a family and a place to call home. Yeah. Even though you're alone in mm -hmm. the in the in the, in in the, the ring. ring, you have a family outside that is looking after you and you know wanting to see you succeed, wanting the best for you, and yeah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, boxing gives, and it also takes. Yeah. What what has it taken from you? <laughs> It's taken so much, like I've missed the countless birthdays, the countless family weddings. You know, I just missed my cousin's wedding in London, uh, December 30th, and she was really annoyed because I was here in LA in camp. Um, but it's, it's like I said earlier, it's the sacrifices and the disciplines that you have to make in the sport um, to, 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 to be the best that you can be in the ring. Um, didn't you do a photo shoot right after a fight? Yep. Last year? Yep. Tell us about that. If you, what if you would have gotten punched like... Really so, um, <laughs> I did, uh, after the LA fight last year, March, I had a shoot for Harper's Bazaar, and it was like a front cover shoot, and I remember walking in, and the, the photographer was just like, oh, damn, I was hoping that... Um, I was praying that you, you didn't have like a black eye or something serious because I, I, I wouldn't have known what to have done with it. I was basically explaining to him about another time. <laughs> um, back in 20, 2020, I believe, it was a professional fight and I got cut and I walked on set with six stitches. And, you know, they honestly, 
they were just like baffled. Oh, damn, what should we do? What should we do? Okay, let's just make her hair big. And so they just made the biggest afro that covered part of the eye. Um, yeah, but there's always ways to get around it. They, they know what I do for a sport. They know that boxing is my number one love and my number one passion. Um, so, you know, if I walk on set with a black eye, let's just cover up with makeup or let's, you know, let's do something in post or something. Um, Have you um, visualized yourself holding up that belt behind you? 100%. I when I when I was at the WBC Green Belt Challenge, and I had to uh, award it to the winner, I was like, oh, "This is my world title," <laughs> and I was holding it like it was my world title. I was like, "Yeah, one day, one day." <laughs> I wish they had tournaments like this in the UK, um, like a Green Belt Challenge type tournament in the UK. It would be amazing. Um, I wish... You can be the ambassador for the Green Belt Challenge in London. In, in, in 100... We should 100% do it because I know a lot of the, the kids um, would just... Like I said, it was just one of those... It's one of those belts that you dream of having as a kid. And if you can have it at the age of 12, it gives you hope for the future. So it's definitely something that should happen in, in London for sure. And you know, seeing all the winners with their belts walking around like little ten-year-olds, and it's too big for them, and they're trying to hold it, and they can't because you know they're, they're too small. It's it's amazing. <laughs> so film film four are making a movie on my life, and it should be coming out next year. And it's being uh, produced by BAFTA winning slash Oscar winning. Producer. Wow. Yeah. Who's playing you? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. Well, we can tell you off camera. Well, we can, we can, we can probably tell you off camera. We can totally let you borrow one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Finished? Everything. Oh, so you can follow me at Ramla Ali on IG and it's at Ramla Ali on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and my next fight is uh, February the 4th at MSG. Um, I don't have TikTok because, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, damn, do I have TikTok? You can follow me on TikTok at... What? Oh my God. Okay, you can follow me on TikTok. What is it? At Ramla Ali Box on TikTok. Um, yes, I didn't know I had a TikTok. <laughs> I'm always on it posting videos. And the Sisters Club have its own? Yes, we have an IG. It's at Ramla Ali underscore Sisters Club on IG. Follow that as well because we're going to do some cool things in um, America soon, for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, that was amazing. Amazing. I Anything you want to say to the WBC boxing? Fans? Yeah, can I uh, get that green belt soon, please?